morning. morning. Please open your Bible today. Our scripture reading is on Genesis chapter 25. Genesis chapter, I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 25, verse 7 through 11. Genesis chapter 25, verse 7 through 11. If you have a pew Bible, it's the page 24. This is God's word. This is the sum of uh, the years of uh, Abraham's life, which he, which he lived, 175 years. Then Abraham blessed his last and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. And his sons Isaac and Ismael buried him in the cave cave of Machpelah, which is before Memri, in the field of Ephron, the son of Joar, the Hittite. The field which Abraham purchased from the sons of Heth. There Abraham was buried, and Sarah his wife. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac. And Isaac dwelt at Beer Lahayon. Let's pray. True God, the most holy one, everlasting, we are coming before your word. Lord, open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts that we may hear and receive your words. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. A tiger dies and leaves his leather coat. A man dies and leaves his name. This is an old Asian proverb showing how important honor is for ancient Asian people. Without a doubt, how other people remember us after we die is something that is important for all of us. Today, we will take a look at a man who meets his death, and that is Abraham a well-known figure in the Bible. We have already heard the sermons on Abraham's life for the last six weeks from the pulpit, and we know that his life was full of ups and downs. And today, we will spend some time examining the last days of this man of God. As we do so, what can we take away from his life? Which lessons do we remember and learn from his life? It shouldn't be the same as the Asian proverb. Our name and honor are certainly important, yet as Christians, there is something more than these. Think back on the sermons you heard here in the chapel during the past six weeks. Which word did you hear over and over again regarding Abraham? I think it would be safe to assume that the repeated words indicate something significant and representative of Abraham. And if I was to choose one word to summarize the life of Abraham, it would be the word promise. Just as it has been stressed by many of the students preacher here in chapel in the last few weeks. Today, through Abraham's death, the last minute of his life, we will consider God's promise again. 
And I humbly ask you this question as one who holds God's promise. Where are you headed? First of all, consider your life in this life, in this world. According to today's passage, verse 7 and 8, Abraham lived 175 years and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years. God made this promise with Abraham in Genesis 15, 15, where he said, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried at a good old age. A good old age. What does a good old age mean? The Korean Bible, I usually bring, <laughs> translates this verse in this way. Abraham would live a long life. Furthermore, in the Septuagint, the word good is translated to, from geras, which means old age. But listen to the following numbers. 205, 218, 230, 239, again 239, 464, 433, 4. 38, 600, and 900. This is not math class. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible tells how long Abraham's forefathers lived from Terah and Noah. Little surprisingly, Noah, Abraham's 10th generation grandfather, was alive when Abraham was born. And Sam, his ninth grandfather, was still alive when Abraham died. So do you really think Abraham died at a good old age? <laughs> <laughs> when you compare the length of his life to that of his forefathers, do you think he lived a long life? I should, I would say no. I submit to you that the meaning of a good old age is not simply living a long life, but rather living well before God. It's not the length of life, but the quality of life. Think about Genesis 17, the chapter delineating God's covenant with Abraham. This chapter begins with the following clause. I'm almighty God, walk before me and be blameless. This is the life God wants from Abraham. And this is the life God wants of you. This is truly what a good life means in this world. When Abraham's oldest servant was looking for a wife for Isaac, he met Rebecca and said, Blessed be the Lord God of my sir, master Abraham, who has not forsaken his mercy and his truth towards my master. A life where God has never forsaken his mercy and his truth is a good life. And this is a life of walking before God and being blameless. Second, consider your descendants, your covenant children. God promised Abraham descendants several times but Abraham probably did not fully comprehend what God meant when he promised that he would be, a, be the father of all nations. He may not have left the whole picture of God's promise as we understand it today. In his lifetime, 
Abraham did not see his descendants expand as the stars in the sky as God had promised. Now, consider the genealogies of uh, the tribes before and after today's passage in chapter 25 and notice the order of uh, description. With uh, Abraham's death at the center, the Bible recites the name of his uh, descendants. Yes, God's promise with Abraham was, God's promise with Abraham was uh, fulfilled. God was faithful. Abraham indeed became the father of all nations. Furthermore, through him, our Lord Jesus Christ was born. He saved him. Please also <laughs> notice what Abraham did for his son, Isaac, the son of promise. Abraham let other sons go away from his uh, promised son in the beginning of chapter 25 so that there was no dispute among the sons. Even though he didn't know God's plan for Isaac, Abraham wanted to keep God's promise by protect, protecting his son Isaac faithfully and sincerely until the last moment of his life. In verse 20, just after Abraham's funeral, the Bible records God blessed the son. God blessed his son Isaac. We sometimes mistaken think that mistakenly think, think that God blessed many of his people in the Bible. However, the expression God blessed so and so, especially for certain men, is found only twice before Genesis chapter 25. This is expression was first used for Noah and his sons in Genesis after the great flood, and only second here in verse 11. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac. God blessed Isaac. Blessing from God is uh, never ordinary. Rather, it's very special. God blessed Isaac, the son of Abraham, for the sake of uh, his promise. This is what Abraham wanted. No one wants here their children to walk away from God. Right? We want God to bless our children and our children's children. God made a covenant with Abraham and his descendants. So we are in covenant with God. And we are beneficiaries of his blessing through the generations. We are blessed because God is committed to keeping his promise with us and our children. And this is why we call our children covenant children. We are the recipients of the very same promise which Abraham had from God. Lastly, consider where you are headed after death. Abraham expected to enter the promised land, the land of Canaan. He waited and waited, but died before he entered the promised land. Nevertheless, he did not forget the promise of God. Abraham could not enter the land of Canaan while he was alive, but he and his wife Sarah were buried in the land of promise. 
the cave of the land of Magdalen, cave Magdalen was located in Canaan. This proved Abraham's faith, but what is more, our God, who is the promise keeper, teaches us where the true Canaan is. In verse 8, it is stated that Abraham was gathered to his people. In other words, he went to his fathers, the place of his people, and his fathers was not just a visible place like the land of Canaan, but it was the place they gathered in the heavens. Hebrews 11.10 says, He waited for the city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. God brought Abraham into the real Canaan, where Abraham longed for. The place we too should long for. And that place is perfect because God himself is its builder and the maker. Yet, the focal, uh, focal point of God's promised land is Jesus Christ. Just as God brought the Israelites out of the land of Egypt later, so God delivers all his people out of the estate of sin and misery and bring them into an estate of salvation by a redeemer. By a redeemer, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him in and in him, we are promised to reach the eternal place. Hebrews 9.15 states, For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. God is the giver, keeper, and accomplisher of the promise to bring us into the promised land, the land we are longing for. As we close, I want to share with you that there is one difference between the Korean culture and the American or Western culture in the way uh, in the way cemetery are considered. In Korea, my country, cemeteries are considered as a dark and scary place full of ghosts and other <laughs> unpleasant things. <laughs> on the on the contrary, here in the States, uh, at least from my experience, cemeteries are rather pleasant place, more like a park. Uh, there are nice buildings uh, found in beautiful and peaceful settings with uh, well-paved paths that welcome people. I often walk around the cemetery next to Freak Park with a little companion, my baby. <laughs> I go there with my three and a half month old baby. Imagine this grave and the baby's throne in a graveyard people who have passed from this life to the to next uh, lay in the ground and in a stroller there is there is a little baby whose life has just uh, begun the beginning and the end of life right someday 
the baby will be buried just like those already in the grave. So what, we, what would be our prayer for this day? Of course, that in this life, she will walk with God. You would also pray for her and the generation following her. But more importantly, praise must be for her eternal life, her final destination, the place beyond the cemetery, the place of eternal Canaan, which is the kingdom of God. What will you pray for? Your life. The same thing. This sermon will be the last of the journey of Abraham for this quarter. However, your life is an ongoing journey. You are in the middle of your journey. So, as you continue on your journey, do not forget God's promise. Remember and keep God's promise because his promise is the anchor and the direction of your life. And be eager to live a good life and pray for God's blessing upon your children and children's children and live this life with your heart set on the place where you will go. So again, as ask you, Christian, as one who holds God's promise, where are you? Great God in heaven, thank you so much that you are our God and we are your people. Keep watching over our life here and guide us until the day when you, you bring us into the place, the eternal Canaan. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.